Hi there, I'm Amanda Cromhoed from Truth. Welcome to the Blind Loyalty Challenge. We interview world experts in loyalty blindly. We're hoping to create insight, spontaneity, and a lot of fun through the challenge. The challenge is about promoting the Blind Loyalty Trust and my book called Blind Loyalty, 101 Loyalty Concepts Radically Simplified. All profits from the book go towards the trust. We hope you enjoy the Blind Loyalty Challenge. So hello to Nick Lamming to help welcome to the Blind Loyalty Challenge. Nick is an independent loyalty consultant, strategic, strategic advisor. He's been in the industry forever. So I'm not going to pick on him and ask him how old ev forever is. But Nick, thanks ever so much for joining us. Hi, Amanda. Yeah, great to be on here. Yeah, so Nick and I connected recently at a conference in London and I asked him if he was up for the challenge and he was full on up for it. So here we go, Nick. So you and I sat on a panel. You were actually the moderator. and We were talking about partnerships. So in your opinion, what is the best loyalty partnership out there? The best loyalty partnership comes in different dimensions. I, I would say from a revenue standpoint, a co-brand card partnership with an airline is crafted in uh, in stone. It, it, it's a beautiful symbiotic relationship uh, when it's done right and uh, it generates revenue. It does something for the customer. Uh, and it also does something for the airline and the, the banks do well out of it as well. So I think you go a long way to, to find a better example of a, of a partnership that, that works well in loyalty. Yeah, amazing. And you know what? It's been around forever. So that says something right. In fact, my very first job at British Airways was to run co-branded cards for BA in Europe. So that's a long time ago. So it's been around forever. <laughs> yeah, and All it's right. still really successful. So yeah, so that's a, that's telling. So great example. Okay, so Nick, you've just recently launched the company Loyalty Connect OS around resourcing great talent in the loyalty industry and digital industry. So in the Blind Loyalty book, chapter 40 is loved by your people. How strategically important is that for the success of a loyalty program? I think it's massively important in that when I've run loyalty programs, I have always had the team as up there with the customer and the members in terms of importance of informing them what's going on, in terms of involving them in not just the day-to-day -day activities, but also why are we here? Uh, and, and planting the flag out there and saying, look, this is our, our mission. This is what we're, we're setting out to do. Uh, and getting people on board with that, I think is super powerful. And once you get your team on board with you, then you find you become pretty unstoppable and you, you can do things that you can really achieve the what would seem to be impossible when you first set out to do it. So, yeah, I, I can't emphasize enough how important it is. And I, I always used to have the the philosophy that if anyone wanted to disturb me, the order that it came in was very much team first. Then it would mm -hmm. be members, and then it would be management team and and other important people in the organization, and then. It would go down from there. So in terms of hierarchy, I think it's uh, right at the top. Yeah, and I talk about this in the book around if a program hasn't invested in its frontline people, flipping it, you can see it straight away. Like it's just, you can see it, the cracks just shine through, unfortunately. So yeah, it's a super important part of everything we all do. And yeah, hence your um, and hence your company that you've just created, which is very exciting. Yeah, the the another example there is uh, again with frontline. I think frontline staff in particular. So when you get beyond the team that you're directly in in control of, and into other areas of the business. So uh, when I I ran the airline program, the frontline staff were super important because you can create a beautiful value proposition and sell it to customers who buy it gladly, and then they turn up at the check-in desk and the staff member says, oh, what? No, sorry, you can't mm. queue here. Go go next door. 
uh, get back in that big long line and and you yeah. totally ruined the the whole proposition and uh yeah my the the business that i i've created is an alternative to traditional outsourcing whereas with outsourcing you tend to offload tasks to a team that is a bit of a black box to you. you 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 don't get to see the the people underneath and those that you do see you don't get the opportunity to sort of keep them develop them uh, and the bad ones you don't see the opportunity to get rid of um so th this is doing it slightly differently in that it's team extension so you can recruit in a in a typical outsourced market which is the philippines but you maintain the control um, and they're part of your team. So you get to build that relationship with them and show them that they have career prospects and really keep good people in your organization. Uh, so it's an enabler for that, as well as being a good thing for the Filipino people who you see in all walks of life all around the world working away from home because they just don't get the opportunities at home that they do overseas. So this is a way of bringing all that together. Um, amazing for good yeah yeah amazing I love what you said at the end actually it's good for the actual individuals in in the Philippines okay chapter 58 of the book talks about points expiry it's so hotly debated what are your views on this points expiry uh, well I'll tell you the the policy that that I had um at the at the airline program with cb pacific and that was um the policy the official policy was activity based so providing you were active for within a 12 month period with the program yeah. uh, and that meant at the time at the beginning it meant earning or redeeming so if you earned or redeemed then your points stayed active um, but what we identified very early on, in fact, it was before the program launched, is that points expiry is the most sensitive topic of any out there to your members. Uh, because there's nothing more frustrating than spending three years earning yep. a stack of points and you're just getting in reach of that reward that you've been saving for. And then it gets taken away from you because you you miss a date or, or something like that and your points are gone. Yeah. So yeah. what we did in the program was if anyone contacted us um, within six months of their points expiring and said, ah, my points have expired, we gave them back. Without Beautiful. question, without query, we gave them back. And we were also working on other triggers to keep your points active. So if you engaged with a promotion, if you logged into your account, because those are all forms of demonstrating that you're still interested in the program. So yeah. the, the argument is always with finance in that finance to see well, hang on, from a PL standpoint, we need to break these points. I, I don't want them sitting on my balance sheet. Get rid of them. But you, you have to, to build the case to say that every member that wants to interact with us is valuable. And yes, I fully appreciate that if someone has gone away and we're never getting them back and we can't resuscitate that relationship, then by all means expire those points. But yeah. If they are still engaging with us, then we must, we absolutely must stand by those points and, and keep them, um, keep them active, keep them valid. And uh, I think it's been borne out as well by programs like uh, United uh, and some of the other big programs out there that have moved to Evergreen. And the reason that they've been able to do that is because they've got smart accounting, smart analytics running in the background that still enables them to take the financial benefit that would be coming from expiry because they're looking at ultimate redemption rates and, and therefore those points that will never be used, which is uh, another word um, for, for breakage. Yeah. 
Brilliant answer, Nick. Thanks. I'm going to record, I'm going to copy this recording and play it to all my clients. <laughs> <laughs> the clients who don't want to listen to me insist on expiring points. Okay, amazing. Fabulous. Thank you ever so much. There were three, I think, very simple questions. You didn't even break a sweat there. So I'd love <laughs> you to tag someone, please, who I can chat to next on the Blind Loyalty Challenge. Yeah, I I'm going to tag... Um one of the biggest characters in my view in the industry that many people won't have heard of um, because he's based in New Zealand. Uh, very important <laughs> weekend for him coming up because he has his foot in both camps of the Rugby World Cup uh, with New Zealand and South Africa. Uh, and that is Simon Rolls. Amazing. Simon and I are both partners on the Customer Strategy Network. So I know him well and absolutely would love to interview him on this. So I'll chat to Simon. Thanks, Nick. Thank you so much. You're an absolute superstar. I love chatting to you. Fantastic. Thanks, Amanda.